This video is sponsored by DeepCut Studios. For more information on officially licensed Gilball products, check the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to CNG Productions. My name is Tom and I'm joined by... No, it's Ian, back on the channel welcome again. Back. Yeah. It's, uh, what are we here to play? We're here to play the new TNG Blacksmiths, which I've just finished it now. Yeah. And we're against uh, Corbelli Masons. Um, yes, Corbelli Masons are going to bring the football jank. Now, we had a really interesting day yesterday. We were up at Leodis State Games in Leeds, which is a fantastic venue. It was. First time at the venue. Guys at Leodis were really, really good. Um, and I was running Corbelli, and that's now given you the itch to, uh, to do a bit of footballing. Yeah, and I was running... Butchers. Uh, butchers, primarily vet boar for my sins. Yeah. So this is kind of washing it clean with the footballing team. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> like a palate cleanser. So we'll show yeah. the lineups and we'll see the set. Yep. Okay, I'm super excited. I get to use the Blacksmith Guild today, and they look absolutely fantastic because Ian has done us an incredible solid and done a beautiful paint job on them with this kind of amazing kind of pearlescent, bluey greeny turquoisey color. Um, and as you can see, it's shining really well. We're looking forward to showing some off. We've picked a bit of a, a mockly mix here, really. I think we, we've just came back from an event where we played Blacksmiths each and we've kind of saw the cage and I wanted more of a football league crew. So we've got Alloy with his master half. They're going to be there just to kind of have a good goal threat and someone to stodge the middle. Culverin and Cutlass are going to be the star attraction. They're the two new Blacksmiths. They're incredibly fun, basically. Uh, Culverin mans the ship and Cutlass commands the ship in terms of where it fires. So you measure from Culverin, it's hilarious. And then we've got uh, Ferrite with Vet Cinder, simply because Vet Cinder's quite fun. She goes into any lineup she wants to. She doesn't really need to worry about the master. And she'll dish out kind of defensive debuffs. And Ferrite's a pretty good goal threat in her own right. She is going to be the captain for this game, so she'll have the additional allocated influence should she need it. And she'll have the legendary play that gives the extra move. So quite a football-y lineup. You can expect Culverin and Cutlass and Half to maybe man the middle of the pitch, and then you've got Cinder chasing kills and Alloy and Ferrite probably going for the goals. So we'll go over to the Masons next. Okay, so Masons that have been on the channel a couple of times now. You actually get to use them this time. I do. <laughs> I'm actually going to play them this time, and it's not a quick and dirty, it's a proper run out. So we've gone with the new third captain, Corbelli. He's just jank personified. He's very good. He does everything that I think Shark wishes he could do. Yes, he's better Shark. Yeah, so we've then, to accompany him, we've got Wrecker, because a 10-inch sprint on a 2-3 armor model just is fun. And he can battering around people out of the way, he can go collect ball, he can do whatever he the wants. The pushes are invaluable, aren't they? They're really yeah. good. Uh, low knockdown for a Mason as well. Granite, again, talking about low knockdown, close ranks, the jog if you damage me. She, in Season 4, just brings everything to the table. And Corbelli gets her up the pitch really quickly Corbelli, because he can give people dodges. He gets granite on the halfway line by turn one. Yeah, Corbelli's team can basically move her wherever she wants. Then rounding out the team, we've got Flint because you can't just have one good striker in the team. You need the man who misses goals like nobody's business. Someone's got to miss them. And then we have a couple of players I'm not sure we've actually used before on the channel. We've got... I don't think Vet Chisel's been on. I think we had super hardcore emo yeah. chisel, but I don't think Vet Chisel's been on yet. Yeah, so Vet Chisel's in because she can shift influence around. If, if the ball gets moved somewhere that it's not going to help Corbelli or Flint, I can move influence to the one that will help. And Squad Tactics will let me to put assist on somebody, get a wee bit extra damage. Remind, remind me of having the monkey. <laughs> and... She's also going to take one for the team, so the burning and poison that you can chuck out, I can potentially tank on her. And then Lucky. And Lucky. Lucky has been talked about so many times. I'm really happy with the paint job on him. He looks great. I think he's one of my favourite faces that I've painted. And it's finally a chance to get him out because he's another one who will give me a little bit of condition clearance. He gives me another dodge in a team that God knows it doesn't need any more dodges, <laughs> but why not? And it's the extra influence is amazing when you're going second yes. as well. Yes, if I'm going second, then I will have an extra influence. So if you count that with a goal, potentially this team can be swimming in influence. Absolutely fantastic. So we'll go to the kickoff and we'll see you in a sec. And this is how things look after the kickoff. And Vet Cinder fortunately did a, uh, a tap in kickoff, which was great because my dice wasn't fantastic and she daisy cut it into the, uh, the piece of cover there, which I presume Wrecker is going to be on a fetching spree for. Uh, so you won the roll off, obviously you declared for me to kick to you, so what is your plan here apart from dodge all of the things? Uh, well, the plan is basically to dodge all the things, score all the goals, because that is how Corbelli do. So, 
the influence spread that I've got out. I've got one on Wrecker. Wrecker is going to do Wrecker collect ball because that's the what best Wrecker mascot does. for fetching the ball. Granite's got a couple. What she does with that, I'm not sure. Four on Corbelli because I think that's a guarantee of up for a goal. Two on Vet Chisel. Um, she can obviously move influence between people if it all goes a little bit wrong. Three on Flint because Flint get three. And one on Lucky just to try and do something. We're both palpably excited to have Lucky on the pitch. We've been talking so many matches we've had where we've been like, should we put Lucky out? Yeah, Lucky, Lucky has been painted for ages and I constantly want to put him in and I can never find a slot. So now is the time. But yeah, this is not a tournament game. This is a friendly football match. As exemplified by my weird blacksmiths. So we've got four on uh, Cinder, who is basically going to try and murder something because that's what Cinder do. Uh, we've got four on Alloy just to try and maybe disrupt and try and get hold of the ball should it go up towards his wing. Ferrite doesn't really need anything. She's just there should she need to threat extend Cinder. Uh, one and a half in case she wants to give a 200 mil to somebody, probably Alloy. And then uh, Culverin and Cutlass have just got exactly what they need to do their normal shenanigans. And I think hopefully Culverin might actually have to, uh, you know, make Cutlass play like an actual goalkeeper for this first turn. Uh, so we'll go to the first activation of turn one, which will be the Mason's Guild. Okay, so Wrecker is on ball retrieval G. We've just measured this out. And his eight inch jog is going to take him six inches up, snap the ball. He's going to come two inches back in cover to here surprisingly actually puts him within his four inch pass range just lightning quick he is super fast so he's going to pass the ball to granite for one and thanks to corbelli's ridiculousness <laughs> that is going to let me make a dodge with another player and i'm just going to measure the out. vet cinder threat range is already being yeah, yeah, the, being yeah checked yes. carefully <laughs> So Flint is going to take the dodge and he's going to dodge just three inches to here. She'll just put him the proverbial away from Vets in there. <laughs> we'll just mark that he's dodged with that lovely little TNG token. And we'll make the pass. The beauty of this with Corbell, if you've not played him yet, is that you make the dodge before you even declare the target. Yeah, so you, you can, can dodge someone into range of your pass. You can <laughs> actually dodge someone in. But we're going on a 50-50, one dice pass, heading to Granite. And it's a fail. Oh, typical. So, blue direction, red distance. Five in the one. That's we'll going to bring the uh, scoop past there. I think that's still going to end up on I think it, it's probably going to go past Corbelli, to be honest. So, right. Five inches in the one is... Yep. It's going to end up by Vet Chisel. And she'll snap it. Right, so we're going to start as we mean to go on. We're going to immediately trigger a legendary play. So Fairright being my captain, she's going to trigger uh, Tongue in Cheek, which is incredibly punny. She's going to jog herself to this position here. And she's then given everybody within a six inch aura, plus two, plus two move, which makes things nice and tasty. Okay, so with the threat extension on Vet Cinder throwing all my precious measuring to hell, I'm going to go with Granite and try my best to prevent Vet Cinder from killing me. <laughs> so Granite, Don't worry about it, she's fine. Granite is going to sprint six inches to basically right in front of Cinder. For one. And for her other one, she's going to pop up Broken Earth. So that's a four inch aura of rough terrain all around the little lady. Culverin's up next to me. She's going to command her apprentice to get in the goal using one influence and then she's going to make a seven inch jog thanks to ferrite just up to about this position here just so she can get ready to launch some nasty broadsides and stuff okay so in response to that one i'm just going to continue putting a wall of three two masons <laughs> in the way of vet cinder the most masony thing to do it is exactly the most masony thing to do so vet chisel is going to take a six inch jog. She's going to end up here. That's going to put her just outside of tapping. Oh no, it's in tapping because it's three inches. She's going to make a tap in past the flint for one. Dodgy dodgeness. And I'm going to dodge. Oh, I hadn't actually thought about who I was going to dodge. <laughs> 
Um, just get everybody up the pitch. I'm going to dodge Lucky because if there's a player that needs a free dodge, it's Lucky. <laughs> so Lucky comes up, mark his dodge, take the three dice pass, needing a three. I'll roll it there. Nails We've it. got it. That's a point of momentum. Flint would have taken a dodge there, but given that we haven't got any momentum for rec missing the racker pass, he's going to keep that. Flint has the ball. And then she is going to use adaptive strategy and pop her last influence onto Flint, bringing him to four. Lovely. Right, the flint goal is incoming and we've kind of uh, prepped for this a little bit. I think the, the wall of masons is a very good idea. So half is just going to use use this on her little buddy boy alloy here. And she's actually got a six inch jog with a legendary, but she's just going to move to about that position there just to disrupt positioning, I suppose is the best way of putting it. And we'll go back to you, mate. So flint will, where'd you go for one? Which is going to take him to the first proxy base. Yeah. So if he's got four influence here, we've just left to save yeah. one for the we've goal. Put, we've put one and my momentum <laughs> in in the hope that I'll have the goal. So then I'm going to spend two to charge hard. Staying outside of alloys now, two inch melee zone. Yeah. I'm regretting not, uh, not popping the legendary here for the three. Staying inch. just at the very extremity of one. I'm trying to decide whether to take a defensive stance or a counter-attack. I'm going to take the defense here with my kickoff momentum. So I'm threes and two during this. I'm hoping yeah, okay. you roll very badly, essentially. So rolling four dice for Flint's native attack and four dice for the charge. And needing threes and two. Threes and, and I two. need at least two successes. So just roll in the middle. So, are you happy that that yeah, one Yeah, you, you've allowed me so yeah. many in the past. So, threes and two, and I've just got enough. <laughs> Good defensive stance, because otherwise I could have doubled. Yes. So, two off, it gives me three successes. I'm only looking for two for the momentous push dodge, which gives me a second point of momentum. I will then push you away, directly away and I will just dodge fractionally back, staying within eight, staying outside of alloy. Now outside of two, and I will take a bonus time shot on goal. Uh, Cutlass is gonna do her two inch dodge. It doesn't make too much difference for now, but just for the sake of moving around the pitch. Yep. Uh, she has got her getting the goal, so the toughness will go up a little bit. Yep, so we have four dice plus one for the bonus time. Oops. We'll move Flint so he can be gloriously ready to get pummeled in the face. <laughs> Shall put him there. We'll move these melee zones because we don't need them now. And five dice needing a five. Come on, Flint. This, Best of luck, my dear. This is what they pay you for. <laughs> oh, and there's a six. Roll out, see if you get screamer. No, no, but there's a single six and the bonus time was a waste that of was. time. So you get the momentum back? Get a point of momentum. Do you want to dodge anyway? I'm not going to dodge anyway because I cannot get Flint away from being smashed in the face. So it's back over to you. So to me then, Cutlass has had the ball trickle out over to her. She's going to use all of her cool things, I think, to start with. So we're going to immediately uh, take our free character play. Thanks to the use of, is it instruction? Choose Lidge, isn't it? Uh, and I'm going to use the broad side, which is the super, super cool kind of AOE one. We've put them both out here. Granite can only be affected once by it, but it's obviously just to stodge up, uh, you know, Corbelli. <laughs> so, two dice looking for a three against Granite. Yep. Uh, do not Ooh. get it. Chisel. Don't get it. What? What? These new characters and they can't roll dice. Those TNG dice. They're terrible. Um, I'm going to spend two influence to use the uh, chain shot. Please let this go. Let's check, get two different dice this time. Um, threes again on Flint. Yeah, we're going to try and see if we can hit Flint. This is the one that would uh, benefit me by giving him the knockdown condition. So let's try that. Hey, there we go. So knocking Flint down, it'll also do three damage to him. It's quite tasty. Um, it is quite powerful. That leaves Flint on 11. I don't mind too much here because the rough ground is doing its job. And Ian is thankfully being the, the sensible tournament player that he is. I was like, I need to go and engage Flint, but I don't want to drop the ball if I'm engaged. But you can do it along the pathway. So basically, Cutlass is going to go around here, 
drop the ball to Alloy and then continue with the rest of her move because she's got the extra two moves, so she's super, super speedy. You are getting a lot of use out of that Ferrite Legendary. Yeah, it's, it's definitely served its purpose. Yep. Uh, and we will go back over to you, my love. Okay, so with Flint on his bum, we are looking at ways to mitigate the damage that's going to go in on him. Got Cinder Protection Duty here. I do have Cinder Protection Duty, so it's time for Corbelli to do what he can do without the ball. So he's going to spend one of his four influence for dummy pass. Friendly model within eight inches makes a four inch dodge. He's going to dodge granite over the rough ground into Cinder, which brings her broken Arthora up. Yes, it does. Forcing Cinder to do other things as well. We'll move that away. So then I'm going to spend another one to acrobatic. Then I need to use my momentum to glide. And I'm going to charge into Vet Cinder. I've got no momentum, so I'm just going to have to eat this, really. Yeah. So, eight inches of charge from here will bring me to there. I'm fours and one, but you've got the extra dice to play with here. I do. So, native tack five, one for granite, four for the charge. And that gives me 10 dice needing fours and one. Oh, threes for days. Right. It's all right, it's not bad, it's, it's not, not bad. bad. You initially see the fails, but there's actually yeah. quite a few successes there. So move those away, get one off for armor. Gives us four, now I've got a choice here. I've got enough for a knockdown. I could get the knockdown, neither of us would have any momentum then. <laughs> Uh, or I can take a momentous result. She's 12 HP naturally. So I'm going to take a momentous 2. Okay, puts it down to 10. Yep. ODR. Over to Alloy then, I'm going to t continue to abuse this amazing legendary play. I'm going to make a 9 inch jog going around to this position here, dropping the ball to Ferrite because I think she's probably the best person to have it going into next turn. Engaging Flint. I've taken the anatomical precision from Half, thanks to uh, his old lady nagging, shall we call it, I suppose, of like, you need to do this. Uh, he's got his two-inch melee zone, so he's going to roll an attack on Flint. He's got five dice to start with. He gets one for uh, having Cutlass nearby. And we're after threes and zero, because Flint's not down, but he's a very pretty man. Yes. So, see how we do. Uh, it's not great. We get three hits, though, which is enough for the momentous Dirty Knives. So I'm going to chuck the Dirty Knives onto Flint, which will knock his defense down to twos now. Yep. So that's the first one. And he takes poison as well. He does take poison, I've got a little token here. I think Lucky's just going to come and rescue him with the conditions in a second. So second round of attacks, then we're going to go for same attack again. Um, I did get the momentum for that, didn't I? So yep. take that. And we're after twos now because he's knocked down and Dirty Knives. That all hits, he's got no armor. Nope. Then we're gonna see Blacksmith spikiness here. So we've got four, five, six. That's the full playbook, but I think I'll just take the momentous three damage. Yep. I think that's probably the, the best bet there. And then we'll go for another attack. Swinging once more. Everything hits again. Uh, four, five, six. We'll take the momentous dirty knives onto granite. Uh, okay. I think uh, it's more than once per turn, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it is. So minus one defense and poison onto I'll granite. Take the poison onto chisel. Chisel. You are more than welcome to do that. And then I'll take my last attack onto flint. Oh, here's, here, the good job we took it then. Uh, so four hits is still going to be enough for the momentous three damage. Okay, so after all that pummeling, Flint is left on 5 health. Uh, Alloy now has got the opportunity to make a 4 inch dodge thanks to his back to the shadow, so I'm just going to quickly measure that out and be back in a sec. And Alloy's just tactically made a dodge into the cover, now within 1 inch is the Flint, just the melee zone is there going into the next turn, and we'll go over to Lucky. So, there was a little bit of debate as to whether or not Lucky was going to go up and spend his 1 to clear the conditions off Flint help him maybe survive a little bit longer. But realizing that the free dodge I would have to make would allow you to dodge that cinder away from all that fun that she's involved in. 
means I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so he's just going to spend his one, and he's going to sprint back over here to this proxy base and at least threaten. Threaten goalkeeping. To get in the way of a goal shot start of next turn. Right, so we're going to go with that Cinder. She is getting plus two move, but she's got broken earth and rough ground everywhere. She's going to move along this pathway to this position here, which should keep her just on the periphery of Corbelli's melee zone and just within granite pretty much without leaving anything. She's then going to, get this out of the way, make an attack on granite. So her six attack would go down to five. Uh, granite has been dirty knife, so she's on minus one defense. So her three defense normally goes down to two. Yes, two well, with two armor. Two armor currently. So, get that to one side. Uh, one miss, two away for armor. It's two successful hits. I'll take the momentous one damage. And what that will allow me to do is to pop Searing Strike on Granite, which would do uh, fire. Do you want to take that on Chisel by any chance? Or do you want it on Granite? Holding off just in case you decide to put something onto Corbellin. Okay, so put it on Granite for now. Yep. And it would also be uh, minus one armor. So makes life a little bit easier for us here. We're going to have a go at having another attack on Granite. So we've got five attacks still because of Corbelli being in the way. However, you're now twos and one. Yep. Let's see how we do here. Good, so one away is four successful hits. Uh, the double dodge is tempting, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck an impale onto... No, do you know what? I'll just take the one-inch dodge. Or even the double dodge. Let's go to there. So outside of core belly, engaging. Granite, non-momentous. Uh, I'm back up to my full tack now, so need an extra dice. So six tack, looking for twos and one. Mm -hmm. Two misses, one away for armor. Three hits, this time it'll be the momentous impale and I'm going to throw that at Chisel. So Chisel will take three damage mm -hmm. and she will also be affected by the searing strike. And she's on fire as well. Then. So she is on fire as well. So she'll take three damage from the impale. Yep, fire. I will trigger Granite's jog. <laughs> So Granite will make a two inch, she's burning jog. She's, she's on fire. And she will jog. Stodge up ferrite skull run potentially. Yeah. She's gonna jog away and be a pain in the head. Take the parting blow? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll take the parting blow. Okay. So, six tack uh, plus two for the parting blow. Just basically takes a, an influence away from me yep. here, doesn't it? And I'm looking for twos and one. Yep. One, 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 two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, will be four damage. Okay. And that's going to leave granite on 15. 15. That's not too bad, I suppose. But you've cleverly robbed me of that last influence there, so I can't dance around anymore. I am going to spend one of the momentum that I've got just to put Chisel back up to full health just mm -hmm. because being 12 HP is not the best thing in the world. Um, not Chisel, Cinder even. We, we've done this so many times off camera, confused their names already. Um, but that's pretty much the end of her activation and the end of the first turn. So we'll tidy up and we'll see in a sec. Yep. And yeah, the condition damage added up really quickly there. <laughs> so uh, Flint is down to... Flint is sitting on a rather peaky three health. And we've got... Chisel is coming in, runner-up on seven, and Granite has dropped down to 14 of her original 20 after that. Burn. That's not bad. The parting blow was pretty solid there, I think. Yep. So I've got a pretty hefty momentous advantage here, so let's go to our game plan cards. Famously advertising the Scottish yeah, <laughs> meta there, right? Yep. Both gone for the plus four. Uh, you've got keep chin up, which basically means you've got uh, the encourage for free. Somebody, somebody is getting their conditions clear free <laughs> before they die. And I've got to keep them all moving, which basically gives me the extra dice on the kick. Yep. Um, I'll be going first, so we'll go for the setup for turn two. And this is the picture as we go into turn two, and the Masons are swimming in influence here to, yeah. uh, to match their conditions. <laughs> Goal influence, and because we're going second this turn, Lucky generates one for free. It's fantastic. Uh, I've done a lot of measuring with Ferrite, and it's very, very unlikely for her to be able to get the goal because of her not being able to get some momentum easily 
with the double dodge. I think she's going to have to go first, but unfortunately we have to just try and see if we can take Flint out and then kick the ball to kind of make Corbelli waste some influence or Lucky. I think that's probably the most sensible option for me. Um, then we've just basically strewn the influence where we can. Cinder's got quite a big stack on her um, to try and do whatever she can do with the impales and the damage. And then Alloy's got a couple, half and Cutlass as well, just so she can fire off her super skills. Um, you've got tons, mate. So how have you got here? Well, mine's, mine's a little bit... Corbelli's the big threat here in the sense that I've got to activate to deal with him, but he's still got enough influence to do all manner of things. You're, you're forced to get the ball away from Corbelli first activation, otherwise he gets it. So that forces you to take out Flint, which means I don't have to put the usual, just so you have token to deal influence. with the token influence on him. So I've gone for nothing on Flint. We've put one on Wrecker, because Wrecker can then get himself a 10-inch sprint if necessary. Start pushing and annoying people or just sit on yep. somebody. And we've gone for two on Vet Chisel. She's sitting on a rather peaky 7 health, so she probably needs to go relatively quick. Uh, Granite's got four, Lucky's got three, and five on Big Dude Corbelli. So my plan probably is Granite goes first and tries to invalidate the influence on Cinder. Yeah, whack them all. Yep. Right, so let's go to the first activation of turn two, which will be the blacksmiths. Right, so Ferrite is going to lead off. She's a little bit slow now, so she's not got her legendary to lean on, so she's going to spend one to sprint along this path just over to this position here, which is within an inch of Flint, taking the ball with her. She's then going to declare an attack. So five dice base. Plus one for Alloy, plus one for Cutlass. And we're looking for twos and one because she doesn't care about how pretty Flint is. Yep. And he's kind of on his bum. So twos and one. Uh, two misses, one away for armor is conveniently what we need. That is four net hits, which will be the three damage to kill him. Yep. Generates me a point of momentum, which I'm going to keep hold of. Just pop Flint over there for you, mate. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to hit her last influence to have a kick in this direction here. She's got a four dice kick at base. She gets a plus one because of my game plan card. So we'll see if we're successful. She's super successful. All, all is successful. Uh, so we use the white dice for direction, black for distance. Uh, in the two one inch, I think that is probably exactly where we want it to be, really. Uh, Corbelli can still meander over and fetch it. But he's going to struggle. He's, he's going to have to bounce around a little bit. It's near enough to Alloy that Alloy can potentially yeah. threaten to pick it back up. And we'll end it there. Okay, with Flint having been taxied off the pitch, <laughs> we're going to go with Granite. She currently has a two-inch move thanks to the burning condition that's She's on. back to like season three Granite that like limped across the pitch. Really she slowly. is, yeah. So she's going to walk to the proxy base, which puts her within her two-inch engagement of... Cinder. Cinder. She's got four influence on her. I'm going to use my free encourage to clear the conditions on Chisel. So they'll go away. And then I'm going to buy an attack on Cinder. I will take the counter just to force the knockdown. Yeah. I'm going to spend my momentum to bonus time it because my six dice goes down to five with you in cover. And I'm going to go back up to six dice. Fours and one. Fours and one. So we'll just roll them here. Oh! oh one hit. One oh, hit. Oh, that is shy of the knockdown. Yeah, it's a momentous push though, so I'm going to push you out of cover. Yeah, absolutely. And move. I'm going to bring you in to me, which will be there. And that will bring you into Corbelli. So I wasn't expecting my counter attack, so I'll take it. Um, so six dice, minus one because of Corbelli, yep. as you said, looking for- Threes and two. Threes and two. Uh, mine's not much better, two away. It's two successful hits. I will take the one damage searing strike. Mm -hmm. So can't put you on fire again, but you take the, the damage there on minus one arm. Yeah. Go down to 13 health. Oh, granite, granite, <laughs> At least granite. you've got the extra dice now, so you yeah. can still do a fair bit of pain here. So, buy an attack. I'm Good back time. up to six because you're out of cover. I have one friend. I think you've probably got rolling space here, mate, if that's yeah. a bit more. So I'm going to bonus time again because <laughs> I, I don't the trust her. Again, fours and one. 
That's still so not great. She's still wanting the threes, isn't she? Yep, she's loving the threes, so one off for armor. I will take the momentous one damage gut and string. Yep, that puts her down to 11, and she's on minus one defense now. Yep, and she's, she's also on minus two move, so she's going to struggle to get away. I'll then hit you again. That was momentous. So down to threes and one now, so you should be absolutely fine. Threes and one, <laughs> I'm going to keep the momentum. So She wanted the twos this time. Yeah. <laughs> she's just determined not to hit the big damage. I will momentously knock you down. No problem, you got knocked down token. I'll get one here. No, yeah. you go. I've got one here. And then with the last hit, you are now twos and one. Twos and one. Roll those ones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still, still going. Four hits this time. Four, man. I will take the momentous two. Puts it down to nine health. I will spend that momentum to heal myself four. And that puts her back up to... Took her back up to 17. That's not bad, that's okay. And um, we'll pass that back over to you. Right, let's force my hand a little bit. So we're going to have to go with Vet Cinder. She's going to stand to clear her knockdown. And she's going to declare an attack on Granite. She's got five tack because I'm being ganged up by Corbelli. Mm -hmm. So, threes and one because of Searing Strike. I'll take the counter. Okay. Well, that's the dice that's come off the table. Does not count. Let's go with this one. Uh, oh, everything. So one away for armor is four successful hits. I am going to take the... I'm going to have to take a momentous result simply because you're going to knock me down again on the counter. So I'm going to momentously impale Chisel? Question mark? No, I'm not. No, I'm going to hit Granite. Momentous 2. Momentous 2. Because you just granite. walk away and take the part and blow again, don't you? And I lose all my influence. Uh, so Momentous 2 on Granite. Okay, so got my parting blow. Attack 6, you are threes and 1 thanks to Gut and String. Yes. Attack 6 plus Corbelli. Yes. And oh, I need four hits to get a double push and just knock you away. <laughs> leaving the only target for your remaining influence being Wrecker. <laughs> so do I bonus time it? I kind of want to keep that. So I'm going to trust that the dice might roll a little Space bit higher there, than they have been. Get the red one out of the way. So three's and one. Oh, it's a dangerous situation after such a... A gunko first turn. It's not bad. That is exactly what I needed for the double push. To double push you away, because you weren't base to base. You'll be outside of two. Yeah. Just a fraction outside of two, <laughs> but it's enough. Okay. And back to you. So I'll tap Wrecker, see what happens here. I think Granite can be a huge pain in the neck with me now. So six tack minus one. Uh, Wrecker or counter. Is he within an inch? He's within an inch. Fine. Uh, two, so, was he twos and three? He's twos and three, in cover. Yeah. Uh, three away, two successful hits, be enough for a non momentous dodge. Yep. She's gonna dodge herself to the inch of the cover there. Uh, question is to chuck the impale now. Which is just either throw it or try and get momentum off Wrecker. I'll take an attack on. In fact, you know what? I'm dodge back into granite here. So I'll dodge into granite. I'll yep. So I'll attack granite again. Uh, so I've got my six tack now. Yep. Three and one because of Searing Strike. Yep. All hits. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, three and one. Oh, yeah, sorry. There we go. Uh, one away from Three hits. Got so excited for a second. Um, I'll take the Mentors two again. Okay. And then I've got one influence left. So she's back to 13. So, six dice, three's and one. One away, miss, miss. One, it's not enough for the impale, sadly. Uh, it's gonna be the, I mean, the temptation is to dodge into, uh, dodge away from granite, just to make life a little bit harder for Lucky, which I think I will probably do. So I'm just going to dodge an inch to there, staying in cover mm -hmm. outside of granite. I'm going to spend an influence, uh, momentum. 
just to heal Chisel back up to full health because nobody wants Chisel on Death's door. And yeah, go back to you. Right, so trying desperately to see ways of getting the ball. And it's, we've figured out that Corbelli could get there and have no influence left. Yeah, again. he's an influence shy of getting it back into play. Yeah, so that extra influence that I put on Lucky. Silly, silly boy. <laughs> so, fortunately for Corbelli, he's got a two inch melee, which means... You can come play whack-a-ball against Alloy. He can just come hit Alloy, because he has all that to play with. Six inches of walk means that I can get to the cover and be engaging. So I'll just walk straight to there. Neatly in the cover, outside of Alloy's one. Alloy's in the cover though, so by my first attack, attack five goes down to four. I have no momentum to play with. Pause them off. So we'll just dice there. One, which is a momentous dodge. Yep. By the next attack, and I will bonus time. Back up to your five time. Yep. <laughs> which is One a momentous hits. dodge. <laughs> Do a bonus time. So I'm not going to bother bonus time on this one. I'm just going to hit you again. You're all hot now. Don't worry. If I roll hot and I shoot a bonus time because the knockdown's on four. <laughs> okay. No, no, nothing. nothing. Oh, cool belly. Hit you again. I think I'm probably shooting off camera here, but it's one one hit again. It's a momentous is. one. Uh, momentous dodge, was it? Uh, one dodge, one? sorry, yeah. yeah. Momentous one inch dodge. I've got my one left to play with. <laughs> Do an acrobatic somewhere. Uh, I'm actually thinking... Or dummy passing? I'm actually thinking that he dummy passes Granite back to stodge up Chisel. Cinder. Cinder. We're still he doing he it. <laughs> or he brings... Actually... He brings her up here. To do some nasty things. Which means that there are two crowd outs on Alloy. Yeah. He's got to have to If he wants to, to do away. anything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're back to more legendaries then, so Hearth is going to declare her legendary play. She is going to give herself a three inch melee zone thanks to Armory. She just spend her influence just to sprint to this position here, which is within two of Granite, but engaging Corbelli and more importantly, Chisel. Okay, so we're now looking at how on earth do we kill Vet Cinder? <laughs> and it looks like the easiest way is send a brewer. <laughs> yeah, send a brewer to do a mason's job. So vet chisel is going to use squad tactics to put assist vet chisel onto Lucky for plus one damage and plus one dice. That costs her one. She is going to walk to the proxy base and then she's going to buy an attack on Hearth. Uh, I'll just take the hit here. Okay, so attack five plus one dice for right. granite. Two and two. And we'll just roll here. Better and that's it. where I don't get the one. <laughs> Four is one damage push dodge. Uh, puts half down to 22. Yeah. And it's momentous. Um, yeah, it is momentous. So I go to three. I take the dodge into Cinder. I'm very glad I healed Cinder now. <laughs> You're on. I then push. She doesn't have sturdy, does she? Uh, no, stu stoic. Sto uh, She's got sturdy. Yeah, so. so I was within two of granite. Yeah, so, so I'm going to push her engaging. there. Yeah, not engaging Corbelli. So I'm now. I'm still in, but you're no longer engaging Corbelli. Yeah. And I'm going to spend one momentum to heal myself four. So take me back to 11. And that'll do. Lovely. Culver in then, she's just gonna mosey on over to engage Granite base to base. She's also being engaged by Corbelli by standing there, but it means that she's kind of in the middle just to do the pivoty things that she needs to do. Okay, so it's time for Lucky to go. Let's see what Lucky can do. <laughs> uh, he has three inches on. He's gonna walk his five inch walk into the cover. I should put him where that proxy base is. Makes it pretty hard for you to get away from him. Base to base with you. 
he's going to buy an attack on Chisel. Uh, Cinder. I don't think I can really dodge anywhere to get outside of Chisel's melee zone, because even if I go an inch over here, yep. I think I'm still going to be struggling to escape. Yep. So I'm probably just going to have to eat this, I'm afraid. So attack five, plus a friend, plus assist, but assist is knocked out by the cover. And you are threes and one. Thanks yes, to gut and the strength. Strength. I got very well, I got the strength this time. Hey, it dice so it right certainly down. has. So, <laughs> five dice, one off. I will take the. Uh, how much health has she got? 12. She's full, yeah. You can do five straight off I'm going to take the non momentous five. Yep. Then I'm going to hit you again. Plus one, seven. Oh. <laughs> that one. Cheeky cotty doesn't come up anyway. Well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> well, it's even now. So non momentous one goes to two. Yep. I mean, decent dice roll here, so five health. Yep. So last one with a bonus time. That should be it. Yeah, uh, that is definitely it. Possibly even momentous leak is one off for armor. Uh, what else she got left? She's on five. Five. Momentous three goes to four, non momentous one goes to two. And that will take her out of action, which puts okay. you up to. Momentum, momentum for the takeout. Six points, I believe, now. Yeah, that takes me to six. And it's back to you. Cutlass then is going to do cutlassy things. She's going to move to this position here to have a go at attacking Granite. She has got five tap base, not six. Which goes down to four because she's been engaged by Corbelli, but goes up by two because we've got both half and Culver in there. Any reaction, mate? I think I will counter. Okay. So I'm after a threes and one here, yeah? Yeah, thanks for searing strike. So one miss, one away. Is four successful hits, just shy of the five. I'll take the momentous. Three damage. Okay. Which takes me to ten health. Which should mean it's going to take you two people to kill me. <laughs> and then you've got your counter attack. Yep. So, so you get uh, minus one overall because you've got Corbelli helping out. Yeah. So six but goes down to five. Uh, you've Luckily, got space there, mate. I am fours and one. It's probably worth bonus timing this. Just because. It's tasty. It looks like it's enough. So one armor. Yep. It's enough for a double push. Okay. And I will come around, double push you directly away. Yep, so I'll just do that for you. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Uh, still got a character play to play with because I'm within Culverin. So. I'm quite tempted just to chuck a broadside at granite, to be honest. Um, I think the chain shot, sorry, the chain shot of granite, the three damage knocked down, I mean, she'll ignore the sturdy. Yep. But three damage is not ready to be sniffed at, I think, at this stage. No. So, I'll have a go. Two dice, looking for a three. Yep. Gets it. So that'd be three damage. Pop your sturdy by any chance. Yep. Uh, to ignore the knockdown, I've got one influence which is unspent. And that'll do for me. Okay, so realizing that there's not really any way for me to generate momentum because Wrecker's not going to do anything to Hearth, he's going to spend his one to sprint. 10 inches of sprint, which we've marked out with the steppers. We've also marked where he's going to battering ram his friend. So, first of all, he hits Lucky. And he brings Lucky to here. Staying in the cover. Next along the way he hits Chisel and he brings Chisel to here. And he ends up over here, which basically says, Alloy, if you don't get the ball, Wrecker get ball. <laughs> Alloy's going to finish the turn off for us. He's going to move into base contact with both Corbelli and Granite. He's taking the anatomical precision from half and he's going to make an attack. 
He's got five tap pace, it goes down to four because of core belly, but obviously see we've got his master and we've got Culverin stood there. I might as well count it. Yep. So threes and one goes down to threes and oh because of anatomical. Yep. And oh bad rolls though. Two hits. That's terrible from Alloy. Um that is really terrible for Alloy. Two hits. Um it's just gonna be a momentous dodge. And there's nowhere I can really dodge to, so I'll just you could dodge to the cover. I could, but I don't want you to push me. Yeah. So I'll just take it. You to go for the counter, mate. That's yeah. awful. That I did no ex no expectation <laughs> to still be able to do that. So tax six. Let's just work this out. We hadn't actually planned on getting the counter off. Plus one for core belly, but minus two. So you'd be yeah. on uh, so tax five. Five. Yeah. And you've got space just and there, mate. Fours and one. Fours and one indeed. Look a left-handed roll on the camera. <laughs> Blame the left handed this for that's what it is. Do I push you? Probably not. I will just do one damage. Yeah, no problem. That puts Alloy down to 11. I'll take my second round of attacks and we'll pray for better dice. So, let's see how we do here. We threes and zero, isn't she? So that's four hits. One, two, three, four. I could take Momentous three damage. Or I could put the dirty knives on you, which would do the same damage overall, but with the extra. I wanted the dirty knives first. Um, I'm gonna chuck the dirty knives on you to poison her. She'll take one damage from that, which puts her down to six, I believe. Yep. Uh, it's momentous. And that will then put her down even further at the end of the turn. Yep. So we'll finish up there. And before I forget, Alloy is just going to back to the shadows outside of Corbelli's melee zone, but still engaging Gran. And at the end of the second turn, the Masons are up on the scoreboard, and Granite's taken three damage, which leaves her on... She's sitting on three. Three health, so... She gets her sturdy back this turn, so uh, potentially Alloy just goes... Gives her a tickle. So I've uh, got the momentum up at the moment, so let's go to our game plans. I've gone for a plus five with fullback. And I went for a plus seven. With C's, okay, so. Went by one. I've got the uh, one influence charge here, essentially. So mm -hmm. we'll do the dodges and we'll cut back. And here is the influence allocation at the start of the third turn. So Ferrite and Corbelli made the dodges towards the wing. Everything's going towards that far side of the pitch here at the moment. Um, but Vet Cinder has came on and put a real spanner in the works, grabbing the ball over the fast ground. Yeah, clean forgot she was going to come in and snap <laughs> the ball. Uh, I did my best poker face to quietly just be like, but... Um, so she's came on with a full stack. She's going to get the one influence charge potentially into Granite. Um, it's influence where Ian has put Flint. And Flint is just off camera. I'll just zoom back here. You can see there he is. Um, that's kind of made you pull back a little bit, really, hasn't it, with him? It's the 11-inch threat of Vet Cinder off the fast ground. Yeah. She could potentially chase Flint down, kill him, and keep the ball quite far away from everybody. Yeah. Um, Corbelli's got the full stack because he's going to do shenanigans and try and get... A goal, obviously. Yeah, Granite's got one because if you don't, she just pops up broken up and makes everyone else's life a misery. Yeah, I think Granite's going to have a bad time from the charge, irrespective yeah. of what happens here. Um, other than that, rest of your team? Yeah, pretty solid mines. Uh, four on Alloy. Two on Cutlass because I'm just learning you just always put two on Cutlass. So I think she gets use out of it. And two on Hearth. She's really just there to stodge, you know, yep. makes... Chisel and Lucky feel bad about life with knockdowns. Yeah, I've got a couple on Chisel, a couple on Lucky, a couple on Wrecker, and a couple on Flint, because if you do manage to get the goal, that means that Flint can shift the ball. He can indeed. So we'll go to the first activation of turn three, which will be the Blacksmiths. Right, we're going to start ourselves off then, and Cinder is going to spend one influence, thanks to my fullback card, to make a charge along this pathway into Granite. Staying within the two of Corbelli, so I don't take the part and blow, and he takes the ball off me. Um, reaction, mate. I'm going to defensive because I have to stop the wrap after we've just measured everything. Out <laughs> stuff. So Cinder would have six tap base, minus one for Corbelli, four for the charge, and then there is half and Culver in. And I think, didn't you push Alloy out or did Alloy go back in? I think Alloy went back in. Yeah, and one for Alloy there. So 12 dice in total. Looking for... Fours and two on the defense. Fours and two, so roll a bucket of nothing here now. Um... Oh, it's not the best. I think you're okay. Miss, miss, miss. Two armor is four successful hits in. Now I've got to take the damage, 
because we were looking at Grim Vengeance and it says as the next action, because I was half tempted to charge Corbelli, but if Corbelli declared the counter, he'd take the ball off me before I could then use the Grim Vengeance. Yeah. So, with four successful hits, we have got the Impale available to us, but that's not a playbook damage result, we believe. It's got to be the colour yeah, number. Yeah, I think people feel, feel free to correct us if we <laughs> are wrong, or the comments will be disabled. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you know you've been on the channel, you know how to use that. Uh, so I'm just going to take the Momentous 2, and then the sweeping charge will kick in. It does three damage to Corbelli. And it'll take Granite. Granite is killed. So I'll get the momentum for the kill there as well. And then what we're going to do next is I'm going to cut away. I'm going to measure exactly what I can now achieve with Cinder. So Cinder has made sure she's put Searing Strike on Corbelli. He's also had to take the, the burning for that. And she's made a two inch dodge thanks to Grim Vengeance. And what she's hoping to do here is hit Wrecker and then bounce into Chisel. That's our, our hope and our prayer. So I'm going to declare an attack on Wrecker and I'm going to bonus time it with one of the two momentum that I've just generated. So I've got six tap base plus one for the bonus and I'm looking for twos with three. Yep, a bucket of ones. <laughs> <laughs> a ones on all of your houses. Uh, <laughs> so twos with three, I got two. I rolled that one over but it was a one. Three away um, is two successful hits. It's enough for a one inch dodge. Yep which is what we wanted. We've pre-measured this. It gets us just within two of Chisel. I'm going to declare an attack on Chisel. So I've got my six attack base, plus one for half being there. Yep. And I am looking for- Threes and two now. Threes and two now. See if we do that a bit better. Uh, no, terrible. Uh, and then two armor. Yep. Two successful hits will be a Mentus one damage searing strike. Okay. So, it'll set her on fire. And now I've got the one influence left, which I think is probably best spent booting the ball down the pitch. I think having it anywhere near Corbelli is pretty bad at this stage. So I'm just gonna get the measuring widget and measure that. And we've just put down the kick marker and Cinder is gonna have to try and thread the needle here because she doesn't really want the scatter to go over Chisel or Echo. Well, that's a bad day. So she's gonna make a kick. She's got two dice kick because she's engaged by Chisel. She successfully does that. The white will be direction, the black will be distance. In the five, four inches. You wanna have a quick check of that, mate? It's going straight to Flint, really. No, hang on, let's just... Yeah, you're fine. That's going to avoid. I'm, I'm tempted for the reroll, to be honest, though, because I kind of want it to go the other risk, way. Risk it for a biscuit? Yeah, I'm gonna risk it. We're on the channel, so screw it. Um, in the four, five inches. So. Bit more straight towards Flint there, essentially. Um, he's still gonna have to move to grab it, that's about it. I mean, technically it's almost hit the post, does that count as a goal? I'll, I'll have it. Um, so we'll just zoom out a little bit, just so you can see there where it is near Flint's feet. And I'm gonna spend one of the momentum that I've gained to heal Cinder back up to 10 HP. Okay, so thinking that the ball is safe in a team which doesn't have O Cinder or Burnish. No killing the wall, sadly, no. And Alloy cannot quite travel that far. <laughs> so burning's, Burning Corbelli is going to limp around this piece of scenery to within an inch of Cinder. His fro is on fire. That is just... Cinder saw his glorious hair <laughs> and thought, She's you know... She's so envious of it. <laughs> my hair burned off. I'm, I'm going to... Do something about yours. Have we actually had the story of like her losing her hair and what no. happens with Furnace? Still yeah, still not, still not out. Come on, Sherwin. <laughs> it's probably written. It's just not gone up on a yeah. blog. So with six influence on Corbelli, we're going to go for the first attack on Cinder. There is no point in counter attacking because the best I can do is get an inch yeah. away with the counter. Attack five goes up to six thanks to Chisel. Four to one on ten health. No, no, it's basically there, mate. So that was. One miss, I rolled that one over, but it was a four. So, four hits on Corbelli. I mean, he's got a solid two damage consistently. I will okay. take the momentous two. Yeah, puts her on eight. I'll then buy another. And he's reliably going to kill her, I think, unless he has a dud roll. Now I'm going to bonus time it. <laughs> Preempted that. You probably got the space here if that's easy with your right hand, mate. Yeah, I'll just move those four out of the way. Bonus time as well, chosen then. <laughs> So uh, I will take the Momentous 2 again. Puts her down to 6. Hit her again. She came back on for like a superstar kill and then he's going With, straight back to the yep. infirmary. Bonus time again. So 
So that's just one. Take a momentous I should have got dodge. one on the mate, so you've got two successes. Oh, two successes, yep. Yeah. So momentous, momentous two again. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, don't do yourself out of that. Yep. She's got four left. Hit her again with the bonus time again. Lost the dice. We'll collect that later. Put a T and G dice. <laughs> I know, I've got wires launched off the table somewhere I need to fetch. Oh, that's. And again, from Momentous 2. Momentous 2 once more. Puts her on two health. G10, so. Fifth hit going in with the momentum to bonus time. This is the great thing with Corbelli, you can just reliably, because he is a mate, and do damage. You tool him up with Tower, he's really toasty. That's nothing. That is nothing. This time, the last one. <laughs> this should do it. No bonus time. You go, you're all hot here. Good luck. Yes. There we go. <laughs> momentous two to kill her. That will take her out of action, get you an extra point of momentum for the takeout. And I will we'll spend that momentum eight to points now, aren't you? heal back yeah. to full. No problem. So he, he made it hard for himself, but he got it. He got there, eventually. Half then, she's going to stop knitting for a second and she's going to uh, attack Chisel. Five dice, uh, looking for threes and two. Yep. And. Two misses, two away for armor, momentous knockdown. Yep. Half doing half things. She's then gonna edge ever so slightly to there, so she is within an inch of chisel and engaging Lucky. Have a swing at him. She'll go down to four tack. He's fours and one. Uh, yes. So in cover. He's in cover, yeah. yeah. Uh, misses, one armor, momentous knockdown. Just put the whack a mole in. Staying within six of Alloy so he can get some bonuses. And that'll do. Okay, so having seen the knockdowns go, trying to work out the threat range on Alloy in terms of where he can come up. So <laughs> I'm gonna go with Vet Chisel. She's gonna spend this momentum to clear the knockdown and burning. It's just reminding me that I forgot I was hearing strike, but I was only going for the knockdown anyway, so it wouldn't have made any difference to yep. me. Um, so I just knocked her with the Searing Strike token. I'm going to buy an attack on Hearth. She'll take the counter. Yep, so I'm attack five. One, two, three, four, five. Two armor, two defense. Yep. Ugh. One hit. Which is one damage non momentously. Puts me on 21. Oh, it's got the counter. Yep. Uh, five tack looking for threes three and one. one. Yep. Uh, a miss. An armor. Three successful hits will just be the knockdown back. Okay, I'll then sacrifice my boot. <laughs> and I will hit you again. Yep. I just want a momentous result. Yes. Oh. Uh, twos and two. Twos and one hit. Non momentous one again. Puts her on 20, I believe. Yep. And back to you. Okay, so Culverin, she's just outside of uh, Corbelli's melee zone. She's literally just going to mosey up and put a melee zone onto Chisel. And um, back after another intense debate as to where we're going. It's trying to do the least dangerous activation, isn't it? That's the order, really. Yep. So Flint is going to be a tap in pass, at least. Good. <laughs> so Wrecker is going to sprint. To the ball, snap it. And I'll just move that. Which puts him within two of Flint and Wrecker's in cover. He's going to declare a pass to Flint, and then because Corbelli is on the pitch, that is going to allow me to dodge Get Lucky out of way. So Lucky comes this way, even though he's on his bum. And we make a one dice pass to Flint, needing a single three. Oh, I was thinking yes. about it. You got it. There we go. Point, Point momentum. momentum. I don't think that I dodge Flint at this stage. Just keep hold of it. Uh, keep hold of that momentum for just now. Over to Alloy then. He's just going to make his base move next to Corbelli, and then he's going to acrobat it. We've just measured it to basically pinch his limb. Make sure I've not given myself too much space. Sure I'm not, terrible at you've that. You've not done a place rather than an acrobatic. Just about there. Yep. As long as we're in base to base. Taking the anatomical from half. Uh, spent one there. I'm going to spend another one to have a round of attacks on Chisel. So I've got five tap base, 
plus two friends, the searing strike, and the anatomical meaning that I'm just hitting her on three pluses. Yep. That's not bad. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the full playbook. Uh, I'll take five damage, not the okay. Take her down to five. Go for another swing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'll take a momentous three damage. Yep. Two left. And I'll swing once more. Two misses. Three misses, actually. One, two, three, four. Momentous three damage. Kills her. So momentum there. And a momentum for the kill. I'll get rid of that searing strike. Now we've got the back to the shadows to play with, so I'll just have a quick look and we'll cut back. And Alloy just gently teleports himself over to the cover there. Okay, quick and easy one here from our boy Flintus. He's just going to sprint and where'd you go and stay outside of eight inches of culverin. So sprint, little where'd you go over the cover to there. Just puts him by the rock Incredible. on the ball. Nice and safe. Safe, except Alloy could come in and do him. <laughs> Fair right to realise there's a game of football being played here and she should actually get involved, so she's just going to skim the fast ground here and just go into base to base with Corbelli. Okay, this one's a little bit more, a little bit more of a pain. Because <laughs> I've realised that I've just put Flint in where Alloy can go prevent next turn's goal run. So spend momentum to clear the knockdown on Lucky, because as we discussed, we don't think sleight of hand can be used whilst he's on his bam. I will then take a walk to within one, outside of Hearth's two, and I'll buy an attack on Ally. I'll take the counter in the hope of just getting the dodge and we just kind of net minus momentum each other. Yep, so attack five goes down to four for cover. Needing fours and zero. Yep. Sorry, fours, and, fours one. and one. Yeah, yeah. I think that you were fours and zero there. Which is not going to be enough for the knockdown. Not even a momentous result. One damage. Okay. Alloy coming back has got four attack because of the cover as well. Yep. Um, and fours and zero because of anatomical. Yep. Uh, one hit <laughs> over here. Uh, I'm going to take a point of damage. Okay. Oh wait, hang on. You're only one shot, aren't you? Yes. I will take the dodge. Uh, I just get dodged to there. Sorry. Okay, and unfortunately I'm outside of four to be able to take the conditions off of Corbelli. So one goes to waste. And it's back to you for a Cutlass to round out the turn. Over to Cutlass, she's within six of Culverin. She's just going to move here to stay within six of Culverin. She's going to spend two of her influence to fire a broadside. We're just going to fire it at Corbelli and at Lucky. So two dice looking for a four. On uh, lucky. lucky. Get it? So that's two points of damage. Yep. And on Core Belly, we're looking for a three. Yep. Two points of damage. Yep. And then the free character play we're going to use is going to be the broadside. And that is going to, so the chain shot, and that is going to be fired at Lucky. So two dice. Gets the four. Yep. That'll be three points of damage there. And knockdown. And knockdown as well. So. Just because there's, I've just said to Ian off camera, there's not really much point going after Corbelli. I think at this stage, if Flint scores, Flint scores. That's essentially the way this goes. So that's the last activation turn. I'm going to round it off. And this is the picture at the end of the third turn. We can see the, uh, the Masons are desperately trying to see if Flint can do the superstar goal run there. Unfortunately, I've got some relatively dodgy cards. My momentum advantage here might not be the best. I wanted to just get the nice little four to guarantee and get a nice bonus. But as we'll see here, I had to go for the plus six, the minus one influence there. And you've gone for wingbacks. Ooh, shadow light. Good move. Very good move. Uh, so we'll sort our influence out. I'll be going first with the blacksmiths. And we'll go yep. to turn four. And almost immediately the action switched onto the completely the other end of the pitch for this turn. As you can see, Vet Syndras came on, needing to go for the kill on Flint here, really, to try and kill this goal effort. But I'm still going to struggle to try and get the win here because Corbelli has a stack of six. He's got a daisy chain of blacks and this all in a row to bounce off. Yep. So even if I kill Flint, you've got uh, chisel and granite and wrecker with a sprint potentially all there to fetch a dodgy scatter. 
but I don't really think anyone else can do anything. Alloy's got four on him just in case he needs to finish the job on Lucky. Hearth is there as well. Two on Cutlass because killing things. Yeah, so yeah. We've got four on Flint to hopefully weather the storm. If he if he lives, then with that day. Yeah. <laughs> um we've then got two on granite to cover if the ball scatters off to my left. We've got two on chisel to cover it scatters back towards my deployment line. One on Wrecker so that he can kind of chase down anything that goes towards the goal. And six on Corbelli, as we said, to cover the entire rest of the pitch. <laughs> so we go to the first activation of the turn, which will be the Blacksmith Guild. So we're going to start the activation with Vet Cinder. She is going to spend two influence to make a charge action okay. into Flint to here. And I'll spend my momentum to defensive and hopefully save Flint's hands he had. So he goes up to his four and one. Yep. Uh, I've got six attack base, which goes down to five because you're in cover. Plus four for charging, looking for the fours and one. Buckets of ones. <laughs> uh, Three is for days, but I think I'm still okay. So that's four net hits there. That'll be a momentous two damage. So we'll go to five for with the... the charge. And it will also put searing strike, which means you will take the fire. Status condition and you're on minus one armor. Yep. How much health is he on? Two health left. Two health then, so. But that will trigger granites come granites. and help people. Now, hopefully, yep. I've moved myself far enough away that granite can't really come and mess with me. I think I'm definitely outside of six. Um, I am indeed. Yeah. So, <laughs> so granite is just going to jog this way to try and scatter fight. Cover where the ball might go. Yeah. So, down to our six tack now, but you're now threes and zero because of the searing strike. Uh, and because I'm a angry lady rather than pretty male. Yep. Uh, so, twos, 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 twos. No armor. How much health do you got left? Two. Momentous one, sadly. Mm -hmm. Not enough for it. And then we'll swing again. This is the last one. This is the last one. Or oh, this one. I could have done with that one hitting, basically. Yeah. Um, oh, that'll kill him. So I'll take the, it was no armor, that's four successful hits. Um, yeah, I'll take the momentous two damage. Okay, so that kills him and scatters the ball. It so does. The one towards your goal. Uh, so we'll do the white for direction. Six and the six. Um, where's the six? Down that six way, is that it? One. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six? One, two. Three, oh, it's the big scatter, isn't it? Yep. So. So six and the six. Puts That's the ball perfect there. for Granite. She's happy with that. She's a little bit slow for getting the ball to the goal, though. Um, I'm just going to check because of Grim Jet Vengeance. I'm within two of you, four of you, sorry. Mm -hmm. So I'll make my Grim Vengeance two inch dodge to there. So I'm in cover, engaging Granite. Um, I'm thinking we're going to spend one of my momentum to heal Cinder again because <laughs> she's just getting her ass hands into her. And we'll go over to you, mate. Okay. After some huge amount of measuring, including that shadow light, which is still sitting on granite, because we thought that might be an option. We're going to try and demonstrate the pure shenanigans that is Corbelli. He's a silly, silly player. He's a so, silly, silly boy. I'm going to spend one for an attack on Ferrite. She'll counter attack. Yep. She's threes and two in cover. Yep. So five dice goes down to four. And I need all of these to hit. Which they do. They do, well done. Momentous hoping, double dodge. I was hoping to get the disarm on the counter yeah. and then that would have made Corbelli very sad. It would. So momentous double dodge takes me to the first proxy. Which is the stepper, sorry. Outside yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. By another attack, so I go back up. So you're on, I'm still in cover. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so three and two. Yeah. Oh, I clave that one. Yeah, you're fine, mate. So one, and that's just a momentous single dodge. Okay. We have to re-step it up now. That's okay, so we'll move those. It's still on. You're still good. So we're up to where that base is at the moment. At least it's the momentum as well, so you could heal the, the fire conditions. Yep. You've got that to play with. So having done that, we'll hit again. Because we're still, we should still be engaged. You're just out. Just out. Uh, okay, so I'll not do that. I will acrobatic from there. Okay. Takes you to here. 
Yep. I'll then go a little bit closer. I'm going to be engaged by you. So I'll just clear the burning for one. I'll jog into Cutlass, which will take me to the end of this one. So let's pop that proxy base there. And I will buy an attack on Cutlass. She'll take the counter in the hope of something happening. I don't know what exactly she can go for. Five here. dice needing fours and so one. We're up to here at the moment, yeah. yeah. Uh, fours and one indeed. So, momentous dodge. Yep. Many a one inch melee, so you can dodge away from yep. the. I'll dodge out of the one. I'll hit you again. Are you clear there? You are. I should well, be. Uh, yeah, I just know you a little bit further because you were outside of what? Uh, yeah. Outside, within, within an inch, but not base to base. Yeah. Say. So I need to get a single dodge. We have two influence left, so you've got one for the kick still here. Yep. And you've got one influence. So that was momentous. I think. Leaves me on two. Maybe one for the goal. <laughs> I'm going to bonus time this one. Yep, I six. can't do anything about this, sadly. So fours and one. Three is the momentous double dodge. Which I will take, which will put me there. Which we can move in shot. Now we'll, we'll, we'll pull the actual yeah. the, the actual guy is over here now. Yep, in shot, legendary to take the free ball. Fantastic. And then one plus a momentum, plus a momentum to bonus time because this is for the win. I am going to have my goalie <laughs> come and engage you. Yep. Not that your five dice going up to six can matter much, but she's so, going to use her quick off the line to come and engage. Five dice up to six, down to five. Needing a four plus, best of luck, mate. Super janky run. And that's it's there. Well done. Handshake on Good camera. Game. I think oh. that's my first camera win. Well done. It's, yeah. You've beaten me many a time on the side. That's you've beaten me with result. my own mason several times. So <laughs> That yeah. is a brilliant result and that's Corbelli shenanigans to take the game. <laughs> yep. So we'll go to the post match interview and we'll see you in a sec. And we're back and well done, sir. I think, yeah, I think that after all these games on the channel, I think that's actually my first on camera win. That is it. You've got a Walking Dead win to your name as well, though. So you've got yes. That as well. Gil Ball somehow I always seem to, to miss. Or I just can cheat my way through usually. <laughs> um, well, you've just said off camera before we started that actually having a mason lineup get takeouts, especially against the blacksmith, because the game is so filled with that nasty cage of anvil and sledge yeah. and faris and sentinel everywhere with furnace. Yeah. Uh, actually, to have more of an open game. To have to have a mason's lineup that didn't have old chisel and tar providing the takeout potential yeah. was interesting. And Corbelli getting that winning goal just did all the Corbelli things and things. Oh so. yeah, I mean, it took us it took us so long to <laughs> figure that one out. I kept the guy going, I can't do it, can't do it. And then when the counter came, and I was even like, even the one that only got the single dodge yeah. didn't manage to wreck it. Yeah, it was a really really good way of showing him off. And actually, you said afterwards the ball killing was all right on the blacksmith side, but it's just the threat that Corbelli consistently yeah. projects. And having Flint on the table being Flint anyway. I, think I really enjoyed that blacksmith lineup actually. I would totally use that again. It was it was a really interesting blacksmith lineup. Yeah. I mean, uh, Ferro didn't do anything for the entire game, but the rest of them were really. Well, no, legendary. you got you got so much use out of legendary turn one. Um, I really like turn one that we were stuck into each other. Yeah, but being able to go, everyone has their sprint distance just as a default. Yeah. Is is perfect. Suddenly, alloy is going nine inches and going get. I'm getting wherever I want. Yeah, I think it made me more likely to get forward. I really wanted Culver in to be in the middle of the pitch so cut was good. Yeah, bomb everybody, and they were really fun to use. They put out a fair bit of damage. I know you were you were quite unlucky not to be able to get to goal range. Yeah, I think it's that I always struggle with measuring in early turns, making sure I'm in range. Winning top of turn two. Yeah, not quite being able to get there. But throwing it's... throwing a wall of masons in the middle that meant that Ferris exactly. couldn't get the goal run. Yeah, I think the influence allocation snowball worked in your favour very quickly. Having Lucky going second. Turn, turn one goal and then always being down on momentum, meaning that I always went second, Yeah, meant that I had influence a 15 it. influence team having only scored one goal. Which allowed you to say quite competitive, so I was putting out quite a lot of momentous damage, but actually you were able to kind of match in key areas when you needed it to get the goal. Or to get yeah, the turns, turns, well, 
Three, certainly, I had so much influence kicking about when it looked like you had yeah. killed off players that still could go in and generate some momentum. Yeah. Being able to put things like two on record to go and fetch or to go and get in the way or push people around yeah. is really, really useful. That actually, crucially, having the two players come on when Flint was going to die yeah. meant that wherever the ball scattered, I had cover on it. You were okay yeah. with it. Um, I think, for me, Vet Chisel did very, sorry, Vet Cinder did very well despite getting taken up twice. I think it's what she does. I think it's just it is yeah. the twelve HP. I'm gonna murder things and that kill of ground. But if she but if she takes out two or three players, that she's yeah. either a net. It's either four for four or it's she's getting you six points for four points given up. And that was it. It was trying to see if we could get the goal with her, but no, really enjoyable. These are probably two teams that we don't know. Will we see changes with them? Will Corbelli see I some? I think we'll much? see. I think the Blacksmiths definitely deserve a nudge. Yeah, uh, um, not those ones. They're great fun. It's all the other boring ones that need a nudge. But there's the, I need ways to break up the cage. I yeah. think is the is the thing. And is Corbelli going to see a, a tweak? We'll see. He's very good. He's he is. He's um, he's very very good. One thing I learned yesterday playing with him is if you get up, you landslide the win. Yes, um, and a, a lot like a boar butcher's team, he just means there's so much influence yeah. kicking around that you're always in the game. All your normal players go B plus. Yeah, all of a sudden, and the speed the. The being able to bounce people up four inches. Uh, I didn't have the ball a lot, which meant I didn't really show that off, but I did at crucial times get yeah. people out of trouble. Yeah, and it's hilarious when you receive and get your whole team halfway up the pitch, don't one. Yeah. So, that's a congratulations yeah. to you, mate. Well, thank you very much. And we will see you next And thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. Yeah, cheers, guys. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content, it means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.